Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most kind. I wanted to take a few minutes of your time today to say Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah bless us all with a spiritual and blessed month. Our fastings be accepted. Our ibadats be raised to heaven every single night. And we be kind of our hearts and mindful of our tongues. Um, in our series to introduce some of the converts in the recent years, MCC is trying to focus every Saturday on one person who has impacted one of us in our personal way or in our mosque. And today I have the pleasure of introducing you to one of my favorite people, Georgia. So, um, Georgia <laughs> plays many roles in my life. She's my mentor because although she's much younger than I am, um, she has taught me that once you set your mind to be guided towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find ways towards him. And he opens doors of ease and mercy and raises you. Um, she inspires me to be a better Muslim every day and I hope her story will inspire you as well. Georgia is a daughter to me. She's a part of my family and um, we have grown to appreciate and this Ramadan we are very sad that we don't get to see her just yet. We're hoping that by Eid we will be able to uh, visit with her and she can come over. And uh, more than anything, Georgia is a friend with whom I giggle and I <laughs> laugh and uh, we share uh, lots of common things about books and shows and what crazy stuff we have been up to. Um, so without with any further ado, I will um, introduce you to Georgia and ask her to, to give us a little background on who she is. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Oh my gosh, that was such a nice intro. <laughs> Thank you, Humaira. Um, yeah, so I am, um, let's see, general background about me. I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, I'm going to college right now for creative producing for film and television. Um, and I converted officially at MCC two and a half years ago, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's a quick background about me. <laughs> What's your passion, Georgia? Tell everybody about that because I think it's very fascinating. <laughs> um, I love uh, writing and producing um, like TV and, and films. Um, I grew up watching movies and movies have always been a really big part of my life. Um, and so I just, I love telling stories, however, whatever form. Um, and representation is also really important to me. Um, so I hope to be able to write and tell lots of different people's stories so people can see themselves on screen. And I'm very excited for Georgia to step into this field. I think Muslim representation by a female is definitely needed and we are very excited to soon see <laughs> in the credits Georgia's name um, and go cheer her on. So please keep her in your duas. So today, because it's Ramadan, it's the actually first of Ramadan, right after Juma Salah that we are sitting to, to chat. And uh, so Georgia, I just wanted to ask you, what was your first Ramadan like? What was good? What was hard? You know, tell us a little bit about your first experience. Yeah, um, so my first Ramadan that like I actually fasted for was uh, three years ago. So when I was a senior in high school, um, I had been kind of studying Islam for about a year. But the previous uh, Ramadan, I, I just didn't really know what to do. So I hadn't done much. So my first official one, it was still before I took Shahada, but that's when I fasted for um, the whole month. Uh, and that was, it was it was good and it was also very hard um, because I was not connected to any community yet. I didn't, I hadn't really found a masjid that I felt uh, kind of comfortable and at home in. Um, so it most of, most of the month was just me fasting by myself in my house. Um, and it was, 
it was it was senior year and I, it was graduation and it was all this, the senior year things that were happening and so alhamdulillah I still managed to like fast through all of those um, and my friends were very very supportive um, they I think made me feel very <laughs> they they never you know made fun of me or anything for fasting they were always very encouraging they always would count me down until Maghrib time like it, they would make a really big thing out of it and like oh yeah she can finally eat um and it was just kind of a joke that like whenever we would go somewhere to the movies or we'd go to an event I would just have a massive amount of food in my bag <laughs> so that when Maghrib time hit I just straight up brought out like a Tupperware of like rice and beans and like a massive water bottle and was just like wherever we are it doesn't matter I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna start eating now because I'm hungry um but yeah, so my, I, even though I didn't have Muslim community, my, my close uh, friends, all of whom were non-Muslim, were super supportive and super helpful and kind of made, made that part of Ramadan um, fun. Um, and I think it's near the end of that Ramadan that I actually reached out to MCC East Bay. And that is when I got connected with Munir and Humaira. Um, and so that was, that was really great. And I wish I had done that sooner, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, just to remind everybody that Georgia was not um, a converted Muslim. She had done tons of research. The first time I met her, my, I was blown away by how much mashallah she knew. And in my heart, it was like, she's already a Muslim. She, she practices like like anybody who has who was born into it or who has done a lot of research into it she was doing salah she she knew a lot of the um all the arkans she was she had fasted this whole month all alone without any support that was just amazing to me and um i think that was our first meeting and our first connection and since then it has been alhamdulillah um bond that I hope to continue will, will flourish as time goes on. So also another thing that um, was that since then, what about your second experience in Ramadan or after con converting, how did you feel? Was the community supportive of you? Did you feel that your needs were being met? Or what would you like us as a community to improve upon? Yeah, I think I think the big difference for me between like my first Ramadan and, and the next ones were not even not even really taking the Shahada that made that much of a difference, but me seeking and like kind of attaching myself to a masjid because before, I mean, because I was a teenager, I didn't have a driver's license, you know, it's hard to get places anyway. Um, but before I just didn't have um a community so once I found one like MCC that I felt comfortable in then it was like oh okay I I need to like look at all the events they're doing and see if I can make any of these um so that's and and also going off to college there was a Muslim student association so there were a couple things uh, a couple events that we had um but I think for for converts how, how, how masjids can accommodate them, I would say, is just be really open-minded and easygoing, um, that it's, it's really hard to fast, it's really hard to pray five times a day, and like a convert might want to fast Ramadan, even if they've only been studying for six months, and they might not even have all five prayers down yet, but just to kind of meet them where they're at which i think mcc east bay and a lot of mosques are are good at but just making sure as community members you're not like oh it's it's your first ramadan well you're gonna pray uh in the mosque every night you're gonna go to tarawi and like i didn't even know what tarawi was i don't think i prayed tarawi until like my second ramadan which is good because it it People can start, especially during Ramadan, because so many born Muslims are excited about all the sunnah that you can do during the month. It's like, well, you got to slow down with converts, just help them focus on the farb because they don't even understand all of that yet sometimes. Um, so, yeah, and just knowing that if, if there are converts in your community, just being proactive about reaching out to them and inviting them to iftars and especially Eid, 
uh, Ramadan can be really lonely as a convert, but Eid especially can be just so sad when you don't have, like I always threw an Eid party with kind of my friends and my family, none of them Muslim, but I would just make food and just like put up decorations and, um, but it's just different when you're able to have just a, a Muslim like family to celebrate it with. And so that was really nice that Alhamdulillah, I've been able, after I met Homera, I've been able to celebrate all the Eids with her. And that just makes a world of a difference because it's, you know, you finally get that celebration, you get that community and kind of feeling like you're really, you know, you get to experience what all the other like born Muslims talk about because a lot of born Muslims are like, Ramadan is all about Tarawee and then Eid and we're going out and it's all like fun and converts we're like, oh, we don't know what, we don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> so just, just being proactive, I think, and reaching out to them because I know I was really shy and really hesitant to reach out or to ask for help or anything because I didn't really know what a masjid could offer. Those are some valuable gems that you have sent our way. And I hope that the community, not only of Pleasanton, but other mosques do embrace that and are more welcoming and connect converts to families, um, you know, that, so that they have their own little, they have a bigger community and then they have a smaller family that they can connect to, call upon, go break bread with and stuff like that. It has been an immense pleasure having you every Eid with us since then. Um, and uh, so one of the, the things I wanted to ask you was, now that it's, it's you, you have spent three Ramadans on and off with MCC, you know, in school you were not here throughout all Ramadan last two years. But what was your favorite memory? What, what um, you know, you look back and you go like, wow, that was, that was nice. Um, yeah, I, I thought, I had to think a lot about this question because I was like, oh my gosh, I have to run through everything. But I think... What clearly stands out in my mind is um, last year Ramadan was finally like kind of during the school year. It get it been mainly in summer, but last year kind of half of it was in the school year. And so um, my school's Muslim Student Association um, put on just a massive iftar for kind of the whole university Muslim community, um, and that was probably just the best experience because I like it was an iftar where I finally like knew everyone <laughs> because even going to MCC going to all their events uh mashallah just great events but just because I am not able to spend a lot of time at MCC I just don't know people that well especially people my age I just don't know them um so last year when I had been going to MSA for two years, so I really knew most of the people who were in it. I knew a lot of the Muslim professors. And so to actually be able, that was only my third or fourth community iftar ever that I'd been to, like in three Ramadans. And so to be able to go to that and to be able to say hi to everyone and to everyone who's talking to you and praying together and just eating together, it was it was so fun and I finally kind of understood like, oh, this is what born Muslims get like every night because they have all their family over and they have their friends and they go to IHOP with their friends at 5 a.m. And like all of that like experience that born Muslims have told me about. I was like, oh, like this is it. This is, this is fun. This is really cool. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely a very special moment. Um, yeah. Well, that does sound like a lot of fun. And I wish you were able to do that this year too. And I was hoping that we would not be in shelter in place and we would get to do um, some kiams together and go for, um, you know, Sahur, maybe to Mirchi or IHOP this year. But <laughs> it seems like we will not be able to. But inshallah, let's hope that um, Allah blesses us with more Ramadans together and we can do that. Um, yes. Another question that um, was put forward to me to ask you is that what advice do you have um, to the to the converts some some of the converts that we have in our community are very very new they might be just a few weeks a couple of months this might be their first Ramadan what advice would you like to give them um, I would say the main thing is to just like go easy on yourself like don't beat yourself up too much if you've never fasted before it's really hard 
Um, so if you don't make every single one, like that's okay. It might feel, you might feel like you're, you know, not comparing to born Muslims. If you, if you know born Muslims, you might feel like you're kind of like failing or not meeting a certain standard, but like really go easy on yourself first Ramadan. And like I said before, like, don't worry about Tarawee. Don't worry about any of the sunnahs. Just focus on like, if you're not there yet with the five prayers, then try to get there um, fast as you're able to do lots and lots of research about like what foods are the most helpful. Um, because sometimes born Muslims, the foods they eat during Ramadan are not the best for fasting. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you're fasting with born Muslims, they might be like, you know, breaking their fasts with like fried food, you know, like lots of samosas and stuff like that. And if you've never fasted before and you're not used to it, fried food can wreck your stomach. Um, <laughs> so keep, keep that in mind, like do your own research and like be, you know, eat very simple, simple foods like soup, oatmeal, you know, <laughs> keep it simple, easy on your stomach. Um, and also be honest that you're fasting with whoever you're living with, whether it's your family, whether whoever it is, they're going to figure out that something is up and it's best if it's safe for you to do so to just be like, yeah, I'm actually, I'm doing this. I'm fasting. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, and it's also a good way to kind of start introducing the fact that you are Muslim to other people. It's kind of a good, a good segue because there's never really a time if someone has known you for a long time for you to be like pop this new thing on them, unless you look differently. Um, so, so Ramadan can be a really good way for at your work or at your home to be like, hey, like I'm not going to be eating during sunlight hours and this is why. Um, but yeah, just go easy on yourself. <laughs> Tell me, how is this Ramadan coming along with shelter in place, being at home, still have school, full on finals coming <laughs> up, you know, not being able to come to the mosque. How are you handling all of those, those stresses? Um, Alhamdulillah, I mean, shelter in place, definitely not ideal. Um, but I mean, I've had Ramadans like this before. So like, this isn't super different for me, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, I think it'll, it is, I wish, of course, that I could go to the masjid more. Now that I have a driver's license, I can drive. I could have gone any time. I was thinking about that. I was like, ah, um, but it's okay, alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, so I think, I think this Ramadan is going to be, it's going to be different for all of us, but not too different um, for me. And I think I'm just trying to focus on, yeah, just go and, Going easy on myself. <laughs> Are there any lectures or any programs that you're excited to listen to during this Ramadan? Um, I made a playlist of, of lectures. My goal, inshallah, was to kind of listen to like one lecture every day from like a bunch of different um, places. But this Ramadan, I'm actually, all my lectures are ustadas and sheikhs, So I, they're all women that I'm listening to. <laughs> and I really, sometimes if you don't know the scholars, you really have to dig through YouTube to find these. But I think part of like the last year I have had, I've definitely struggled with my faith and, and feeling a little bit disconnected. And I think one way as sisters that we can reconnect is, you know, being able to listen to female scholars and um that because I think for any women converts when I was converting I listened to kind of all like the internet famous like shakes and and all of that which is not a bad thing but I got a very one very specific point of view of Islam and it was always from men's point of view um and so I think I'm trying this Ramadan to really connect with kind of the female scholarship that exists in our faith because it does exist and it's awesome, mashallah. So I would really recommend any female converts to, you know, look into 
talks with women, Quran recitation by women. That's also something that can be challenging to find, but it's out there, it exists. Um, one of my favorite um, ustadas, Mar Mariam Amir Brahimi. I'm going to pronounce your last name wrong. You're, she's you're pronouncing it right. Okay, okay, yeah. She, she's um, an, uh, a scholar from uh, Southern California, and uh, she's just amazing. And she is having this Ramadan, uh, like, movement to encourage women to, like, post videos of themselves reciting Quran so that you know, the next generation of women knows that the Quran is, is open to them. It's for them to, um, yeah. So she's, she's a really cool person that I've been following. And so she's and so energetic. She is. So energetic. Like, I've been able to uh, meet her once in person and listen to her speak. And she's, she's just amazing. Very talented. Oh, mashallah. How about sharing that list with us? You know, because I also struggle with that thing, thing that, that as you said, that um, it's very easy to, alhamdulillah, there are many resources to find um, in our times. Now, this time, um, ask me when 15 years ago or 20 years ago, when I was a mom with young kids, it was very hard to find resources that you could sit home and still be inspired by these great scholars, male or female, and female scholarship was not very prominent at that time at all. So we are very blessed that we live in these times where through internet and Instagram and Facebook and Zoom, we, uh, we have access to mashallah scholars from all around the world. So I would love for you to share that with me. Um, and with that note, I just wanted to say, we miss you terribly. We hope to see you soon, even if we can social distance appropriately. And so <laughs> I hope we can do that. Um, just this morning, we were discussing that um, Eid, we have to somehow manage to see each other and, and um, at least wish one another. I wish you a blessed Ramadan, Georgia. And um, let me know if you need anything. And let MCC, Munir, myself, we are all here at the service of anybody who um, needs a uh, just a year to listen to, just a helping hand. Take care. Safis. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>